Commission meeting of July 14th, 2020 to order. Roll call, please. Sullivan here. Carillo here. Laura here. Kavich here. Grzykowski here. Hold on here. Yeah, Fred, you're next. Brad, oh, there what? you go. Roll call. Anna here. And Chandler here. Super here. Okay, I think we got everybody. Um, <clears throat> before we go any further, Carrie, would you please read in to the record uh, the notice of video phone conferencing? Yes, I'm just having a few technical issues. Stand by, please. Good time. Okay, sorry about that. The City of Oak Creek is authorized to hold this public meeting remotely during the COVID-19 public health emergency under the March 16th and March 20th advisories from the Office of Open Government and the Wisconsin Department of Justice. For the advisories, this meeting being conducted via Zoom video conference with telephone conferencing capabilities was duly noticed for the City of Oak Creek Municipal Code and statutory notice requirements more than 24 hours in advance of the meeting. Members of the public have been advised of the options for participation via direct mailing to property owners within 300 feet of a pro proposal, via the COVID-19 information page on the city's website, via social media, and via the information contained on the meeting agenda. This meeting may also be viewed at the city's YouTube page, the link for which was contained in all aforementioned notice methods. The meeting recording will be also accessible on the city's YouTube page within 48 hours. Plan commissioners and participants are initially muted upon joining the meeting. Plan commissioners and staff have the ability to mute and unmute their microphones throughout the meeting. Please mute at all times except for roll call, motions, voting, and when recognized by the chair. Roll call and voting will occur per the usual and customary procedure, starting from plan commissioner seating positions south to north in the Common Council Chambers. The chair will facilitate questions and comments by calling on each plan commissioner or by requesting the use of the raise hand function in the Zoom webinar control panel. Only speak once you have been recognized by the chair or moderator. Applicants, the representatives, and all other participants who wish to speak will be unmuted when there is a direct request for information from the plan commissioner staff, when the participant utilizes the raise hand function within the Zoom webinar control panel and the moderator verbally indicates that they are unmuted, and when a phone participant dials star nine to indicate that they wish to speak and the moderator verbally indicates that their line is open. When unmuted, all participants must state their name and address for the record, then proceed with comments or questions. Questions and comments may also be entered into the Q&A function within the Zoom webinar control panel. Staff and or the moderator will monitor this function during the meeting and provide the information requested. There shall be no private messages or side conversations during the meeting utilizing chat or Q&A functions. Chat and Q&A messages are part of the public record. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Carrie. <clears throat> um, that will get us to the approval of the minutes of June 23rd, 2020. Has everybody had a chance to take a look at them? A little bit lengthy, but. Uh, when the commission's satisfied, we'll entertain a motion. Lorik moves to approve the minutes of June 23rd, 2020. Chandler seconds. Roll call. Ben and I. Sullivan, I. 
Gorilla Eye. Laura Kai. David Chai. Krizikowski abstains. I was not at the meeting. Hold on, Eye. Fred, got on mute. Brad, we're on a roll call. There you go. Okay. Can you hear me? Yep. I'm, okay. Seaport I. Thank you. Chandler I. Okay. Uh, minutes are approved. <clears throat> uh, four significant common council actions. Carrie, if you would, please. Council approved the following. An ordinance authorizing a conditional use permit for automotive sales and service on the property at 8041 South 13th Street and an ordinance rezoning the property at 200 West Drexel Avenue from M1 Manufacturing to B2 Community Business. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Carrie. Our first item is 5A, and it's a review of draft of conditions and restrictions for a conditional use permit uh, for the expanded animal hospital at 318 West Ryan Road. Carrie, if you would. Or the plan commission may recall that this was um, a pr recommended for approval at the June 26th meeting. Uh, the proposal is for an animal hospital expansion, which is basically a new building on the existing parcel. This will have kennel and boarding facilities and the existing home where the new building is proposed will be raised. So the conceptual site plan is now on the screen. For those of you who uh, wanted to remember what the actual proposal looked like for the conceptual site plan, the large building is the proposed addition, the new building um, for the facility, and the site plan includes all of the proposed parking, the outdoor dog runs, the patios, etc. So if the commission will turn to the conditions and restrictions, there are a couple of things to highlight under section three. This is recognizing that there will be only one animal hospital with indoor kennel and boarding facilities and outdoor dog runs in accordance with the conditions and restrictions. Uh, this is recognizing that there will be two buildings on the, on the property, but not two animal hospital facilities, meaning two separate entities working as, a, as an animal hospital. Under B, uh, the facility is permitted to operate 24 hours a day, seven days per week. The use of outdoor dog runs shall be limited to between 6.30 a.m. and 8 p.m. Animals must be kept on a leash uh, when they're outside unless they're in a completely fenced-in area. There's no outdoor storage of any kind that's been allowed as part of this conditional use permit. There was none that was actually requested. Um, and there would be no on-site cremations. Again, that was not something that was requested, but this was something that was uh, included in another condition and restriction document for an animal hospital within the city. Under section 4B, this is just recognizing that along with the requirements for landscaping for the rest of the property, it also includes landscaping requirements along the uh, parking areas in accordance with code. Section 6 includes all the required setbacks per the district and section 7 is the time of compliance, which is the standard 12 months to start as of the date of approval of the ordinance that is approved by the uh, Common Council. So with that, if there are no questions from the Plan Commission, there's a suggested motion for approval on the screen. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Carrie. Um, before we start, Kevin, as usual, uh, is there anybody from Brentwood that would like to say a few words or yep. do they just wanna wait on questions? I believe both said they were just waiting on questions, but we do have Brad Osgood and Brad Egan if there are questions. Okay. Thank you. Um, we'll turn it off to the, or turn it on to the commission. We'll start uh, left to right or south to north. Christina, Christina. I, I have no question, thank you. Okay, uh, Matt. Engineering has no questions either. Don. No questions. Greg. No questions, thank you. Um, Chris. Uh, well, this is in my district. I have no questions. Um, I am. Um, excited that uh, uh, Brentwood is doing uh, what they're doing over there. Uh, they've been a long time uh, partner uh, in the city of Oak Creek. Um, I will say that it's going to be a shame to see 
the house go because I used to go swimming there back in the day when I went to high school with the Osgoods. So um, a long time family, a lot of history and a good family for the city of Oak Creek. Thanks for what they're doing. Great, great. Thank you, Chris. Um, Fred? I'll go. I have no questions. Oh, sorry, Don. I skipped you, didn't I? My train of thoughts lost. Uh, sorry, Fred. Anything? No nope, questions. Chaucey. No questions. Thank you. Okay. Um, just a couple. Uh, Assistant Chief Havy, any concerns out of fire? Uh, no concerns. Okay. Uh, I do have just one question, Carrie. With the conditional use because it's on another parcel. We normally put this conditional use and we let it go for like five years or something. Is, is this continuous now with the property for good? Is this a different situation? It's a little bit of a unique situation that we did discuss internally at staff level. And the reason that there isn't an expiration date is because this is an existing facility. It's been an existing facility as a conforming conditional use since at least the 60s. And we felt it was slightly inappropriate to suddenly put a, uh, an expiration date on something that's existing and has been in existence for so long. The plan commission can certainly recommend that there be an expiration date at which point the applicants would have to come back and renew the conditional use permit. But again, staff felt that this was not something that they wanted to put forward um, as a condition. Again, I think it's very logical thinking and very prudent thinking. Um, I just wanted to ask because. I know lately we've been putting sunsets on these to see if it all works out, but um, I agree with the staff totally on this one. Yeah, and one word on the sunsets or the expiration dates whereby the applicants would have to come back for conditional use extension or amendment or, or just a reapproval. Those are being proposed for either a very um, extensive expansion for uh, uses that have uh, potential for impact to the, the city services, the city infrastructure, or on the surrounding neighbors, or it's a new, a new type of business to the area. Um, so those are some of the reasons why we have some of those sunset or expiration dates that are being proposed as part of the conditions, conditions and restrictions. For this <clears throat> particular use, it's a little bit different, so. Great, thank you, Carrie. Uh, I myself have no other concerns or questions. And I agree wholeheartedly with Chris. Um, glad to see they're expanding and um, improving uh, improving the, the lives of our, our, our pets and animals. So uh, with that being said, we'll look for a motion on 5A, please. Grzykowski makes a motion that the Planning Commission recommends that the Common Council adopts the conditions and restrictions as a part of a conditional use permit for an animal hospital with a kennel and boarding facilities on the property at 318 West Ryan Road after a public hearing. Anna seconds. Roll call. Anna, aye. Sullivan, aye. Carrillo, aye. Lorik, aye. Gavich, aye. Grzykowski, aye. Muldani, aye. Lipper, aye. Chandler, aye. All right, good luck, guys. Uh, wish you well. Um, and it'll be a vast improvement for you, and I hope, I hope everything goes well. Uh, 5B, um, again, conditions and restrictions for a freight yard, terminal, and chicken depot uh, located at 101 West Oakview Parkway. Uh, Carrie. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This again was recommended for approval at the last Plan Commission meeting on June 26th. It is for a freight yard, freight terminal, transshipment depot facility within the existing building. Uh, this is within Oakview Business Park, and there are no proposed changes at this time for the building or the parking. There is a proposed tenant in at least one of the spaces. However, that tenant has not been publicly announced. This is the approved site plan going back to 2016-2018 for the site. This is in existence again, uh, no changes to the site itself. If you turn to your conditions and restrictions, some sections to point out, section 3B, there shall be no parking or storage of vehicles, equipment, merchandise, parts, or supplies within the designated public and employee parking areas. Outdoor storage shall be limited to the parking of trucks and trailers associated with the business. 
and shall be located in designated loading dock areas and stripe stalls on the northwest and west portions of the property. There shall be no storage of unlicensed non-operational vehicles, equipment, merchandise, parts, supplies, or any other materials. In section 3C, all parking areas shall be striped and landscaped in accordance with approved site plans and applicable codes. Section 3D, no box or cabinet signs other than logos with accompanying channel letters in conformance with all applicable code sections shall be allowed on the building itself. Section 4B, this is getting at truck routes in uh, response to some questions raised by the plan commission during the review. Trucks utilizing this facility shall adhere to all posted traffic signs and regulations. Trucks entering and exiting the site shall not utilize West Oakwood Road west of the intersection with South Oakview Parkway. In other words, they will have to proceed to Howell Avenue first before moving west. Uh, section six, six, setbacks, buffer requirements are listed in that table for the site, and that is part of the uh, Oakview Business Park. And then section 18 is the duration of the permit. This is what we were talking about with the previous item. This does have a sunset or expiration date of 10 years from the date of issuance of the conditional use permit as approved by the Common Council. Uh, the reason for this is because it is a brand new request for a brand new building. So this will require additional review at such time as the conditional use expires. We do recommend that the applicant submit a, uh, an amendment or an, a request for extension prior to the expiration date well in advance so that we have enough time to schedule all the, the required reviews and public hearings. With that, there is a suggested motion for approval on the screen if the plan commission has no further questions. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Carrie. Uh, Kevin, is the applicant with us? Would they like to address uh, we have their, before we go? We have their attorney, Ryan Spot, if needed. Oh, okay, if needed. Okay, uh, we'll start out this time north to south. Uh, Commissioner Chandler. Uh, no questions, thank you. Commissioner Siebert. No questions. Oh, Danny. No questions. Uh, Alderman Guzikowski. I have no questions. Thank you. Alderman Lorick. No questions. Thank you. Commissioner Carrillo. No questions. Commissioner Sullivan. None. Commissioner Hanna. Uh, no question. Thanks. Okay. Um, guess I just kind of got one. Um, I, it's important and I agree with it. Uh, the exiting only to Howell Avenue and not using Oakwood. Um, Little hard to enforce. Do we just figure based on the location they're going to use Howell? Um, Mr. Mayor, this is Carrie. I can say that that language was actually included, at least a version of it, as part of the requirements for the FedEx freight facility whenever that was reviewed and approved. So it's not dissimilar to any kind of conditions that are already in the area for certain of these uh, truck terminal facilities. Okay, thank you. And uh, Assistant Chief Havey, any concerns with this one from FIRE's perspective? Mike, I see you unmute it and then mute it. I, you might be having problems, so. Well, I'll tell you what, Mike, unless you put something in the chat, we'll consider it no issue from fire. I'll give you a minute. No issues or concerns I've seen popped up on my chat. So. With that, uh, motion on 5B, please. Thank you, Mike. Kuzikowski will make a motion that the Planning Commission recommends that the Common Council adopts conditions and restrictions as a part of conditional use permit for freight yard terminal transshipment depot facilities on the property at 102 West Oakwood Parkway after a public hearing. 
Hannah seconds. Roll call. Hannah, aye. Sullivan, aye. Grillo, aye. Lorak, aye. Gamich, aye. Krizikowski, aye. Aldani, aye. Sleepert, aye. Chandler, aye. Okay. All right. Uh, good luck, guys. Uh, wish you well. Uh, C, temporary use permit. Uh, it is to review a temporary use permit for the sale of remaining spring and summer merchandise inventory uh, on the sidewalk at 6462 South 27th Street. And this is for Mega Marts, better known as Pick and Save. So, Carrie or Lori? Lori. Throw you <laughs> off every time, Mayor. Um, so I knew you were I, here for a reason. I apologize. We The um, agenda is a little off. So there's three of these uh, temporary use permit proposals that we're going to go through tonight. All of them are for our pick and save um, at each one of our locations in Oak Creek. So there's three of them. Um, so we're going to start off with the 2320 West Ryan Road, um, which is the order that you found your packet in, but doesn't necessarily match the agenda. So 2320. So this is pick and save number 387. The zoning is B4. This proposal is uh, for outdoor display and sale of remaining spring and summer merchandise on, on the sidewalk in front of the building. Uh, the, what they're asking for is a 14 day extension of a temporary use permit that I had issued um, earlier in the month. And the proposal states that there will be no sales in the parking lot and that the operation hours are essentially gonna match what their business hours are. So 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. So this is the um, proposed area. I don't know if you can see my cursor, um, but it's just right up in front to the, to the east and west of the main doors. And the roundies who I was working with on this provided a idea of what that um, display will look like. So as you can see, they are requesting to have displays not only against the wall, but up against the fire lane. So we have a little history on on all three of these. Um, in May, on May 20th, uh, 2020, I issued notice of violation letters for all three properties, um, for Ryan Road uh, too. And what we noticed is that they were having um, a lot of displays of merchandise out towards the front of the property. And as you can see in that top um, picture, some of the displays were blocking entryways, they were blocking fire lanes, um, and, and there, it was an extensive amount. And this is problematic because we don't allow displays of merchandise um, unless they have a conditional use permit or a temporary use permit issued through the Plan Commission. Um, so while working with Roundies, who they were great to work through um, and willing to, willing to come to a compromise for a short time, um, we decided to issue a 14-day temporary use permit to help give them a little time to get rid of all that merchandise and, and sell it off. Now, this permit didn't extend to the propane tank display. This was simply for the seasonal merchandise that they had out, out front. Um, and we've done this for them in the past just for Christmas tree um, sales. Um, every year, it's 42 days that we've issued in the past, um, which we're allowed by code to issue through the, the zoning administrator position. Um, and, and I have to say, there was no, plain, no complaints issued during these times. So, but we do, as staff, have concerns, and I know if you've heard it many times in the past with other proposals similar to this, is that uh, staff feels that this impacts the character of the community. Um, we've consistently recommended against it. Um, other competitors like Farm and Fleet, Woodman's, Myers have all approached us with similar proposals, um, but, but we've declined them. Um, and one of the issues that we see also in this proposal is that, and the other proposals as well, the plan doesn't include really important information like um, the walkway width, and how wide the displays are gonna be and how much space that's gonna allow those um, customers to come and go in. Uh, also, we, we have some concerns about some site distance issues too. Uh, right now, when they were using those displays, they were pushed up against the fire lane. And so those customers were coming in and out of the store and uh, drivers that were coming by could barely see them before they stepped out, out, out off the sidewalk. Uh, so those are some of the staff concerns that we've, we've um, seen with these. So uh, in short, uh, we have two suggested mo motions for you. We, uh, of course, staff does not support this approval. However, um, we did uh, 
provide you uh, decision-making procedures within your staff report. Um, and then we, of course, also have, if you choose to uh, help them out with this and extend that 14-day temporary use permit for an additional 14 days, we provided a motion for that as well. Okay, thank you, Laurie. Um, Kevin, uh, is, any, is there a representative from Pick and Save here? Would they like to wait on questions if they're with us tonight? Uh, nobody signed up for it, but we do have two phone-in callers. I'm not sure what item they're calling about. So if you're calling for this item, please press star nine now. All right, nobody raised their hand for that either. Okay, um, I'll open it up to commissioners. Uh, Christine, any questions, comments? Uh, no, I have no questions or comments. It looks very clear. Thank you. Okay, uh, Matt. We have none. Uh, Don? I have a question. Um, the concern we have, is it on one specific, I know we're doing these one at a time, but it's an overall, um, or is it one of them has, um, is more dangerous to walk into the street and be, you know, uh, hit by a car, or is it all them th the same? Sure, they're essentially all the same. Um, the only difference is, is that two of them not only have the seasonal displays of merchandise. Some of them have propane tanks also in front that are have been there year round. Um, and another one had a red box kiosk that we, in, normally in Oak Creek, we ask for them to remain inside the building, um, but they have it outside their entry, so. So they've broken more than just this extended period they have yeah, yes and and since uh i began this position about a year ago we recognize that this is happening continuously uh every season and it seems to be getting worse um you'll see with the hell avenue location they were flat out blocking entryways with swimming pools and um different display fixtures uh, which causes a hazard so and we are concerned and I have um, experienced somebody with a small table, like taking money outside for these, for some of these items. So I don't know how safe that is either. It's like with a little card table and chair. Yeah, and, and they've stated to us that they weren't gonna do outdoor sales and take money, um, but we have also heard that too. So that is another concern. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, Greg? Um, I don't, I guess I don't have too many concerns. I, I know I see this year to year happening. Um, and I do agree. It seems each year to be, each year to maybe be a little bit more. So I guess if we're looking at kind of controlling it from continuing to expand, I did have one question on, on the motion on number four, I, I noticed that it says non seasonal merchandise, including propane displays. I don't know that I've seen somebody with a propane cage inside, is that normally what we recommend is to put the propane indoors? No, um, for me, I believe that's a safety issue to have those propane tanks inside. However, the way our code is written, we do not allow it at all. So they really, at the end of the day, have two decisions to make. Either A, don't have it or have it inside. Um, so for these, I for the propane displays, I mentioned relocating it um, out, out, basically out of the, out of the exterior. And I apologize, this one I did not correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, Chris? Well, I was contacted by the um, manager at the, um, at the Ryan Road location. Um, and uh, again, it's, it's just a matter of, right now it seems like we're trying to find a, a strike of balance because um, they were surprised because it's something that they, they've been doing every year, year after year. And so all of a sudden, why this big pushback? So they don't, they didn't understand maybe the process or the, or understand, uh, the fact that maybe we were just looking the other way, uh, in the past. I, I don't know what the answers are, but, uh, for some reason we're coming, they feel like we're coming down kind of especially hard now, um, in, in that we haven't really. Uh, done it like this in the past so we have to I think come up with a balance at least for them but I do I do also agree that because um, I have because of these items were on the agenda 
uh, I made a point of going to all of them uh, just to, to experience it and just to sit in a park to that for a minute. And um, it, it's, you know, the same old, same old, nothing has changed. So I, I don't, I just want to know how we can kind of do something, you know, fairly uh, and, and a, a little balance for all, all of them. But I agree that we need to look at uh, tweaking something for sure. And, and in the past, we have recognized that and, and they have not been addressed specifically, but other locations, other uh, stores similar to them have been addressed um, and turned down. Um, we did have a very good conversation with the VP from Roundies and he does understand the situation. Um, and we also discussed about signage issues too, which go beyond the, the scope of what their proposal is. So mm -hmm. we've had uh, various code enforcement issues. And so I feel at least through this process, we've variety to of being on the same page. Yeah, okay. Don? I, I have no questions. Uh, Fred? Can you hear me? Yeah. No questions. Okay. Chaucy? I do have a question for the applicant. Uh, I don't think they're with us. Oh, they're not with us. Okay. But maybe Lori can take care of it or someone on the commission possibly. Okay. So my question is specifically uh, with the safety concerns, are they in agreement to moving those items um, outside of those areas? The, the applicant understands that they can't have in that location um, and that this that we're extending a courtesy to allow them a little extra time to continue with the displays until they sell the remaining merchandise. And in their proposal, they also were very specific about what those items are going to be. Um, flowering baskets, um, kiddie pools, and um, different summer plants was what they listed on the proposal. And we're hoping that they'll abide by that because we have seen additional merchandise even in the last week go out, um, which I find concerning. And I noticed uh, you said propane tanks were out there also. So yes. that is not on the list, correct? So that should not be there. No, and those are non-seasonal merchandise. I mean, they're used year round. Um, same with the red box kiosk. And so, uh, is this the location that had the red box kiosk on the outside? The Ryan Road one did not. Only the 27th Street had the red box um, exterior to the building. Okay. And um, just can you provide a little more information on why we're actually extending the time considering uh, the 14 days were already provided to clear yeah. everything out? We were trying to work with the applicant and provide them the 14 days, which I had issued. They requested a longer time. They actually um, were even suggesting to allow themselves to have seasonal merchandise year round. Um, but I did explain the history of, of those uh, proposals and that they were more than welcome to um, proceed with that. However, um, I, I think to be able to give them that opportunity to send the room, sell the remaining merchandise would be, you know, something, a, a, a gesture in good faith by the city. And, uh, and one final question. So let's say uh, the items are still lo located there and in violation as they have been in the past. So what's the next step considering they've had uh, one violation already? Um, well, in the circumstances, I would contact them one more time. And if they're not, then they get a citation. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, I think I got everybody. Um, I do agree with just about all the comments out there. Uh, we need to put some controls to this. As long as Lori's okay with the conditions she drew up, it gives her some uh, some teeth, I guess, so to speak, to go out there and enforce. Um, so Excuse me, Dan. Uh, yeah. Uh, Doug Seymour, Director of Community Development. Uh, I raised my hand, so I'm not quite sure how that works. I, I just wanted to add that I mean, when we have situations like that, we always try to work with the property owners to 
can we come up with a reasonable solution? And it's not so much that staff is opposed to having outdoor display of merchandise. It's, it's when it is unregulated and it, again, provides, uh, presents safety issues and blocks fire lanes. And it, it's, it's, it extends to things that probably shouldn't be so stored and sold outside. I mean, it's one thing to have, like Lori had mentioned, seasonal items like pumpkins or Christmas trees or even flowering baskets in the spring. But I mean, it, it quickly can degenerate if left unregulated to include, you know, pallets of other merchandise. And, and that's what we're really trying to regulate. So in those cases, we would prefer to have a plan that uh, designates where those areas are and has uh, more some more decisive rules with respect to how and what can be displayed outside. So if that's something that uh, the roundy stores want to pursue, I think we'd be happy to work with them towards that goal, but we just need to provide some structure because quite frankly, you know, it was getting out of hand and it's tough to say, well, you know, I see pick and save's got it, why can't I have it? And that's kind of what we're trying to be, you know, very equitable in how we enforce the code. So that's just a bit of background uh, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Doug. Uh, no, points well taken and couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, we really needed to get a handle on it. We do want to work with them, but we do want to get a handle on it because just as Doug said, uh, next thing you know, we got everybody asking. Um, Greg brought up an interesting, uh, very interesting point about the propane and the, the red box kiosk long time ago, Lori, really goes back and we debated about these red box kiosks when they first came out. And it came through plan commission. Um, you'd have to go back through the records. They, it might have been okay to have the red box thing outside, particularly on 27th. I don't know about the other areas, but I don't know if the propane ever got addressed. That's probably something they should permanently address if, if they do want to do those exchanges going forward. It, um, we do we do see propane tanks regularly at all the gas stations. Yep. Um, in, in the red box. So um, I apologize. I, I did not see anywhere that it's been approved in the past. Um, and so that's why we did note it. No, and, and you're probably right to do so. My memory is, it's stretching back some. It might have been, might have been uh, Dick Bolander was around. It might have been a while back. Um, but I, I do remember talking about that. I think we're in the old city hall. So, you know, they might have something there for the red box, but Definitely, I think we should kind of clean it up, see what they're approved for. And going forward, this does give you some, some teeth, so to speak. So, Mr. Mayor? Yes. The red box situation was discussed, but it was never approved. And as far as propane tanks outside are concerned, those are conditional uses in certain districts. So if it's in a B4 district, for example, you'll see those as conditional uses for gas stations, and it would be appropriate in other B4 districts for grocery stores to do the same. At least per the existing code, we can look at that as part of our zoning code update to see if there are other alternatives that we can incorporate into the update. Okay, well, thanks for the information, Carrie. I, I couldn't remember if we approved it, if we discussed it. I, I just remember it was a long discussion. It was, it was ungodly long, but anyways. I have um, a comment as well. Um, yes. If I think on number five, maybe you should change it to not not um, just in the parking lot, but any you know outdoor on the sidewalk or whatever, because they were kind of tucked in the sidewalk. But um, they might look at this as that that's okay. Are they actually selling on pick and saves behalf? Sometimes we'll see like yeah. Legion there or the Lions selling hot dogs or broth. No, they were selling the salts. plants. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. So no, other than that, um, again, if, if staff's good with this, I would support staff's recommendation on this if they feel this it gives them what they need to get the situation under control. Um, well, Mayor, this is uh, Mike Avey with yes. Fire. Um, hopefully oh. my connection's uh, stable again, so I hope you can hear me. Yes. Uh, just to uh, comment on, so for um, any, conflicts or that we have interest with the uh, fire lanes during our normal uh, fire prevention inspections, uh, usually those violations could be remedied um, in a timeline, but that doesn't uh, 
change, you know, it may change within a week or two. So if they remedy and move product out that's blocking fire lanes based on our normal uh, fire prevention inspections, um, that may not be the case for the next period of time. We might not be out there to inspect for another six months. Um, so that, you know, some of those things do happen where we note those on violations, they're corrected, um, but the product or things get moved back into block the fire lanes. And we only get notified if someone has a complaint. Okay, thank you, Mike. And thank you for speaking up. You actually reminded me of a comment I wanted to make. This is really for the general public. Unless you are driving a fire truck, do not park in the fire lanes. <laughs> I go up, I'll, I go to pick and save quite a bit. And it is unbelievable the amount of people that think that is a private pickup lane. That is not a private pickup lane. And I don't know what they're doing for curbside, but in many cases, these people feel they're just running in to do whatever they have to do and they can sit there for 10 minutes. So again, unless you drive a big fire truck, do not park there, general public. So I know that wasn't on the agenda, but um, just wanted to put it out there. So if, if yeah. there's nothing else, uh, yeah. yes, go ahead, Don. I have a question. So maybe I just need an education on the propane. If I'm reading that right, it's saying it must be moved to the interior. I apologize. It's it's probably correct on the uh, actual commission report, but I was quickly trying to put together a uh, PowerPoint and must have miswrote it. Um, but it normally says uh, in the other ones it should say remove from the exterior of the building. Remove from the exterior. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I guess the, what I'm confused about is are we saying it's okay to have these inside propane? <laughs> I don't feel it's safe to have it on the inside. Staff discussion was that they probably should not be selling it at all until there's a solution to to this, whether it be through a conditional use permit, um, which would allow for it, or that they just see selling them. I don't think I've ever seen propane sold on the inside. Inside, no. Mike, uh, how's fire's take on it? So yeah, I, th I think uh, that's not a common practice and probably not adopted through most of the code through like an NFPA or state code that those uh, storage tanks and less they're used uh, based on the occupancy if it's a, a warehouse or they can store their own tanks in there but for sales I don't believe those um, are normally stored inside. Yeah I, I don't want to get them give them the impression that they should just start moving their propane tanks inside. Um, Doug, Doug, Doug any institutional memory of yeah, yeah, they just, ever got I mean, approved for that? I don't believe they have, but I, I just rather than trying to make a condition to the motion, I mean, it's just they're not allowed unless you have a conditional use permit. So if that's something they're interested in, and you know, it's not unique to them, uh, we will consider a separate application for a conditional use permit that would allow them to have outside pro propane sales. Okay, so the wording on four, it would be. Um, what, how do we, what's the, what's the proper wording we should use, Carrie, Doug, Lori, for this uh, on four with, in concerns with propane tanks? I would delete it. Delete Any it? Any reference to propane because it's, it's not allowed without a conditional use permit. Okay, will we be notified of that? Will, no. will the city send out a letter? Um, I, I have a good connection with uh, Tammy Koch, who is um, the assistant for the VP for Roundies, and I'll have a conversation with her. Okay, thank you, Laurie. You're welcome. Okay, um, any other questions before we go to a motion? It's a good conversation. Okay, if not. Uh, I have one question. Yes. So. Uh, Lori mentioned earlier that we were talking about 27th Street, um, or 27th Street is up next on C, but we've got um, D, we were talking about D, which is 27th Street. So which motion are we uh, going on here? For? Actually, we're on C for 27th Street. So we're on the College Avenue one right now. Right, that's what I thought, but I apologize, my slides must have gotten all messed up on this. So this should be for Ryan Road, 2320 Ryan Road. So our southernmost pick and save. So we're actually on D then, the, yes. the paperwork we had. Yes. yes. Drive Ryan Road. Okay, so the motion would, 
good catch, Chris, would be for 5D was actually the pictures and story we talked about was Ryan Road. Yes. Just to be clear, commissioners. Here, just to make things a little bit easier, let me, there we go. So this is the suggestion mo su suggested motion for 2320 West Ryan Road. Okay. And, and this is where the confusion came into play because the red box kiosk yes. is so not that, here. It's on 27th Street. And we're gonna just strike uh, number four and uh, make uh, number- Which would, uh, would go away anyways. So. Yeah, okay. Okay. Clear, ready. Okay, motion. Kuzikowski makes a motion that the plan commission approves the temporary use permit for outdoor displays of merchandise for pick and save 378, uh, 387 at 2320 West Ryan Road with the following conditions. One, that the displays be confined to the walkway and against the front facade of the building. Two, that the, no fire lanes or building entrances be blocked. Three, displays of merchandise be limited to the items listed in the narrative. And four, no sales will occur in the parking lot or sidewalks or anywhere outside of the building or as stated above. And a second. Roll call. And then five, all signs shall comply with section 17.0709 temporary banners and construction signs shall be issued a temporary sign permit. And then six, that sales shall occur between the hours of 6 a.m. and 11 uh, p.m. And seven, that the temporary use permit be for the outdoor sale of merchandise expire on July 31st, 2020. No extensions to the temporary use permit will be issued. Hannah, okay. seconds. Roll call. Hannah, aye. Alden, aye. Brillo, aye. Lorik, aye. Kavich, aye. Kuzikowski, aye. Aldani, aye. Hipper, aye. Chandler, aye. Okay. Motion carries for 2320 West Ryan Road. We will now take the score at 6462 South 27th Street. Uh, dealing with the same issues and conditions. Exact same right. situation. Yep. Same code enforcement issues um, and the same proposal. Um, would you like, do you have, does anyone have any questions for this location? If you could just show the pictures that sure. you were, uh, that's what I was looking for, yeah. So I apologize. So the last pictures were actually for 27th Street, but this is the one for, this is Ryan Road. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank and you. As, you can, as you can see, it, it, it goes beyond just plants. They do have other types yeah, of items out been, here. Been so, growing. yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, they got pots and all sorts of things out there these days, so. Okay, commissioners, any questions? From Christina's end? Uh, I have no questions, no. Matt? None. Don? Nope. Greg? No questions. Chris? No question. Don? Nope. Fred? No questions. Chelsea? No questions, thanks. Okay, motion please. That the plan commission approves the temporary use permit for indoor displays of merchandise. For I'm sorry, sake. this is Carrie. Can you, can you start over? You kind of cut off at the beginning and we didn't catch it. You bet. Guzikowski moves that the plan commission approves the temporary use permit for the it, outdoor displays of merchandise for pick and save number 348 at 6462 South 27th Street with the following conditions. One, that the displays be confined to the walkway and against the front facade of the building. Two, that no fire lanes or building entrances be blocked. 
three, displays of merchandise be limited to items listed in the narrative. And four, that no sales will occur in the uh, parking lot or anywhere on the sidewalks or as noted above. Five, can you scroll down? That all signs shall comply with section 17.0709 temporary banners and construction signs be issued a temporary sign permit. Six, that sales shall occur between hours of 6 a.m. and 11 p.m. And then seven, that the temporary use permit for the outdoor sale of merchandise expire July 31st, 2020. No extensions of temporary use permit will be issued. Deeper seconds. Roll call. Anna, aye. Sullivan, aye. Grillo, aye. Laura, aye. Gavich, aye. Gizikowski, aye. Aldani, aye. Deeper, aye. Jambler, aye. All right. And our last store is item 5. E, and this concerns the store at 8770 South Howell, same conditions and restrictions, same issues. Same issues. Here are some of the code enforcement pictures that I took. Um, as you can see, they had a very sprawling display that ran the length of the entire front of the building, even in front of some of the um, suites um, that were not part of pick and save. So um, here's Pretty one. Pretty slick where fire truck park there too, eh? Yeah, it's a new color. I like it. It, it, it doesn't say look at me, but um, yeah, so uh, again, swimming pools in front of exits. Um, it's an issue. So. so, any questions from any commissioners, feel free. I can't see the raise your hand function, only the moderator can, but if you want I to speak, no go right ahead. Christine? I have no questions. Okay. Anyone else? Seeing none, motion. I'll go. <clears throat> well, Donnie moves that the plan commission approves the temporary use permit for outdoor display, sorry, uh, displays of merchandise in, for pick and save number 862 at 8770 South Howell Avenue with the following conditions. The displays be confined to the walkway and against the front facade of the building that no fire lanes or building entrances be blocked, displays of merchandise be limited to items listed in the narrative, non-essential merchandise, are we, I'm sorry, are we cutting the propane out of this one? Yes, we'll get rid of what is currently number four and turn number five into four. Excuse me, uh, number five, no, or number four, no sales will occur in the parking lot. Uh, and we, we also changed that to um, the exterior. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. That's okay. No sales will occur in the exterior of the building. Okay. Uh, let's scroll down. Uh, number, okay. number six, all signs shall comply with section 17.10709, temporary banners and construction signs, and be issued a temporary sign permit. That sale shall occur between the hours of 6 a.m. and 11 p.m. or as determined by the Planning Commission. The temporary use permit for the outdoor sale of merchandise expire on July 31st, 2020. No extensions of the temporary use permit will be issued. Before we have a second, can we please clarify number six about as determined by the Planning Commission? We can't have an either or. The as determined was asking whether the Planning Commission wishes to change those suggested hours. Uh, do I need to read it again or can I say so move? Uh, that the sale shall occur between the hours of 6 a.m. and 11 p.m. is the condition in the suggested motion. Okay, uh, number that's number six, that the sale shall occur between the hours of 6 a.m. and 11 p.m. Thank you. You're welcome. Hannah Seconds. Roll call. Hannah, aye. Sullivan, aye. Grillo, aye. Lorek, aye. Gavich, aye. Grzykowski, aye. 
Johnny I. Secret I. Chandler I. Okay. Uh, that takes care of our pick and saves. I think that's all of them. Um, and that will get us to 5F. Uh, we're going to review site building, landscape plans, and related plans submitted by North Shore Bank for a new institution at the property at 200 West Drexel Avenue. Uh, Carrie? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Plan commissioners may recall that the parcel was for this property, or the parcel was rezoned for this particular use, uh, and that was approved by the Common Council at their last meeting on July 7th. This is for a new bank facility um, with video teller and ATM lanes on the property at 200 West Drexel Avenue. The proposal is for a 2,429 square foot financial institution. The existing garage that is on the north side of the property will be removed. The hours of operation that are included in your packets include the lobby and building. That will be 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Saturdays and closed Sundays. The video tellers, which are at the north part of the property, just north of the building, uh, those will be available Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m., Saturday 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Sunday 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., and then the ATMs will be available 24-7. This is the proposed site plan for the financial institution. Everything will be raised, and then this is a brand new building, brand new parking lot, and uh, this is the outlay for that particular use. The uh, the drive-through lanes for the video teller and ATMs, again, are on the north side of the building. Minimum parking requirements for financial institutions are one stall for every 150 gross fit square feet of customer service space, plus one stall for every peak shift employee. So if we go to the floor plans, you'll get an idea. Oh, sorry, a couple more here. Floor plans give you an idea of where the customer service areas are. Those are um, generally in blue, there's a little bit of overlap in the red uh, for the vestibule and what they call the knowledge desk and bank of you wall. So that's basically the entry uh, areas that we're talking about for customer service space. So it's about half the total building square footage that's readily accessible to the public. The plan of operation also includes a maximum of eight employees per shift at any one time on the property. So therefore, a minimum of 16 parking stalls would be required, and the plans show about 17 to 18 stalls, so they do appear to meet or exceed that requirement. Turning now to uh, the landscape plans, you'll note that they, uh, they are showing landscaping on the east and west sides of the property in the landscape islands and also along the building. So I'm just kind of blowing up certain sections here to make it a little bit easier for you to see. Um, they did respond to staff's comments for having some landscaping in that five foot strip between the paved area and the property to the east, which is actually a drainage basin or a drainage ditch. So we appreciate that very much. And showing a bit of the landscaping proposed around the building, that large landscape island on the south and then around the proposed uh, monument sign. And turning now to the building elevations, the proposed exterior materials include four inch stone veneer, four by eight by 12 decorative concrete masonry units that's along the base. Uh, there's a glass curtain wall for the lobby area and an aluminum storefront system. So again, more glass. Um, and then silver metallic pre-finished metal fascia, flashing and softer panels along the standing seam metal roof. Um, and also as accents on the building and those accents comprise less than 25% of the facade. So this is the south elevation giving you an idea of what would be seen from Drexel Avenue. Note that the signs that are shown are just placeholders at this time. We will work through any kind of sign request at a later date and if necessary um, we will proceed to sign appeals if they for whatever reason need to have something that doesn't meet the code exactly. Along the east elevation, this gives you an idea of what will be seen as uh, traffic moves uh, west on Drexel Avenue. So again, that large curtain wall and entry is going to be from the east side of the parking lot, um, the same kind of stone material and CMU base. And then what you'll see here is the entry to those two video ATM uh, kiosks that are just a slanted metal roof 
and then the panels will, or the columns rather, will match the um, stone of the building. North elevation, same materials, just gives you an idea of what it would look like from that north parking lot. And the west elevation that you'll see as you're coming east on Drexel Avenue. What they are calling video teller machines are basically going to look like your standard ATM drive through um, The video tellers are remote. They are not connected to the lobby. So you'll have access to a teller for those hours of operation that are beyond what the, what the lobby hours are. On the right are the trash enclosure elevations that shows that they are going to match the uh, stone that's on the building and then a metal gate. These are materials examples and showing you an idea of what the building would look like. This is an existing location elsewhere. It's kind of their prototype for at least uh, for this particular site. This is their, what they're going to be mirroring. And renderings for the building, giving you an idea of what, uh, what to expect. So we didn't talk entirely about landscaping. We do have a couple of things that are missing from those uh, submitted landscape plans that'll need to be added before they go to building permits. And that uh, those are the details for the planting height and the mature height, just some things that are required per code. Uh, nothing real substantive at this point. And just as a reminder, there were no mechanical units that were really shown. Um, there were, I think there was a couple that, that were shown to be screened by the building itself, but any ground building or rooftop mechanicals, uh, utility boxes and transformers must be uh, screened per code. I do believe that they're uh, proposing to have rooftop mechanicals, we just need to make sure that those are screened. For the plan commission, there was note in your uh, packets, your staff report, regarding flood hazard areas. Um, as part of that rezone, we did have a, uh, there was a determination from FEMA about the special flood hazard areas on the property. The buildings were determined to be out. However, there are still some requirements that need to happen with regard to those amended flood hazard areas, and they do affect the building slightly. These plans that were shown were actually um, incorporating some of these requirements. We just need to make sure that we're still working with the applicant and the engineering department to fulfill these flood hazard area requirements. And those include a minimum of 15 feet from the proposed structure. Uh, that needs to be one foot above the regional flood elevation. That's per NR116 and the local floodplain zoning code. So basically you need to follow um, the national standard as well as the local standard. There's also a requirement for a LOMAR F. That's a letter of map revision based on fill that's issued by FEMA. That's required prior to the issuance of the building permit. Green infrastructure is also required and the location is noted that it may need to be modified as it's proposed within a floodplain that may have actually changed since the staff report was written. Uh, curb required along the eastern edge of the pavement to direct the drainage to the green infrastructure. That's also a comment that may be in uh, revisions right now. Uh, again, these are things that are being worked through with the applicant and the engineering department. So with that, there is a suggested motion for approval on the screen subject to conditions one through four. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Carrie. Uh, Kevin, is there anybody uh, from MSI or North Shore that would like to say anything before we start? I guess not. I'm on, right? <laughs> I can hear you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Okay. I can hear you too. All right. Um, well, we'll pick up if if uh, if the applicants decide to speak. Uh, someone just stop me, and we'll go we'll go from there. We'll start with the commissioners. Uh, Chaucey, you want to start us off? You got anything? Yes, I do have a couple questions, uh, Carrie. For this location, what are, are the neighboring businesses to the west and east? of this thing. So immediately to the west is actually a city owned property that is uh, mostly open due to floodplain and wetlands. 
Immediately to the east is a city owned property um, that's a drainage area and then immediately east of the drainage area is the water and sewer utility. To the south that begins Drexel Town Square. Okay, and uh, based on that, I do have a question for the applicant. Is the applicant available? We, we do have David Kane and Andre Hunley from the applicant party. So my question for the applicant, can you provide a little more information on the traffic flow on this location? Hello, can you hear me? Uh, this is Andrea Hunley from MSI General. Yep, we got gotcha. you. Yeah. Okay. Um, traffic flow will be um, entering off Drexel onto that frontage road through that uh, traffic light there. Yeah, maybe you can flip back to the site plan. And there is kind of one way in and out. Um, so customers can kind of come up, park next to the building there. If they're going to the ATM, they'll just kind of keep going um, north into the site, then turn left into one of the ATM drive lanes. And as they're done, they kind of exit through that way and kind of loop around to the right and then exit the same way that they came in. Okay, please repeat because I'm trying to follow the flow of traffic. So on the right side where it's gray, is, mm -hmm. is, is that where the um, vehicles enter? Yep. Okay. Um, there's kind of a little smaller frontage road. Yep. Yeah, she's kind of drawing there. They kind of go north through the property, go through the ATM and then kind of circle back and then exit. And if nobody's using the ATM, they can come up and use um, one of those first few stalls that's right along the side of the building. Okay. And so where, where is the pedestrian traffic if you want someone to come into the building? Mm -hmm. That sidewalk that she's kind of coloring there connects up with the existing sidewalk that um, is right along Drexel Avenue. Okay. And then, um, and there's a controlled intersection there um, as you kind of enter that little frontage road off Drexel Avenue. The, the, the image on the left there kind of shows a little more of the Drexel Avenue and that little frontage road. And there's a stoplight there. And that's where cars enter and exit. Is that what you're referring to? There's a stoplight there? Yeah, right off Drexel okay. Avenue. Okay. And so you can then go east or west on Drexel, or is it just one way? Nope, as you leave the bank, you'll come up and there'll be a stoplight there, and then you can go either east or west onto Drexel Avenue, or you can go straight into the, the town square. Okay. And so will there be signage to um, help the flow of traffic here? Because it's a lot of, it looks like a lot of two-way traffic all the way around from what I see based on where the um, parking spaces are. I just want to make sure everyone is uh, safe with the two-way traffic. Yep, and your sure bank usually does some smaller kind of um, parking lot signs, just kind of directional signs. And I would imagine we would put one on the corner there just to direct people to the ATM. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Brad. Yeah, I have a question and regarding to the floodway. Is there any problem with the floodway on the north end of the property? Fred, this is Carrie. When you say problem, what, what are you referring to? I mean, are they infringing on that flood, floodway or are they just on the edge of that floodway. The floodway line was determined by FEMA to not be affected by this proposal. However, the flood fringe does have impacts. Okay. No problem. Thank you. Okay, Don. Anything, Don? Can you hear me now? Yep. 
Sorry about that. Um, no, I guess my question has more to do with uh, not necessarily the bank. I was kind of looking at the map um, and there is a, a, a satellite vision and there is a sidewalk, an existing sidewalk that goes in right in front of that property. I'm assuming that's gonna stay, but the sidewalk doesn't connect. It just kind of dead ends on both ends. And, and my question has more to do with like the greater plan with the sidewalk and that whole area kind of that stretch um, more and more businesses going in. And I don't know if the city has talked about adding a sidewalk on that North side, just like on the West side in front of all that new development, like, you know, from, and then it's kind of a weird looking thing. You just have a sidewalk that dead ends on both sides of that property. Um, I guess it's not really uh, part of the site plan. It's just something that I caught my eye. It's a good question. I had it on my list too, to connect actually to the water department going east. Uh -huh. Yeah, the water, it, what really needs to happen there is, is you connect from basically the intersection where Culver's is all the way to probably Starbucks. There seems to be a couple sections of sidewalk that just do nothing. You have the section in front of the new Aldi's then you don't have any, then you have a little, and it's just something to think about is, you know, just connect it all. That's gonna be more and more of a busy area. People might wanna cross the street back and forth between Drexel Town Square area and the north side of the street. Uh, it was just something that caught my eye, that's all. More, more of a discussion than a question. And, and Mr. I Mayor? can kind of speak oh. a little bit to that. Um, we do have where sidewalks are kind of incrementally added as development happens. This may be one of those areas. And we are looking at, um, there are preliminary discussions about looking at Drexel Avenue as a corridor as part of a study. So we don't have anything concrete to give you in, for that right now, but I can tell you that there are uh, at least initial discussions that would look at certain things like that. And I would defer to uh, Commissioner Sullivan if he has any other input or to uh, Director Seymour. Thanks, now I'll let Matt handle the technical details, but uh, it's important that the commission know that I believe beginning in 21, 22, with some design work, the city has been awarded uh, some grant funding to reconstruct or repave Drexel Avenue. And as part of that, there's a commitment on behalf of uh, the city staff and management to take a look at, as Carrie mentioned, Drexel Avenue, it's an entirety between, uh, between the freeway and Howell Avenue as a corridor and what type of streetscape improvements we can make uh, since it is the major gateway into the city. And no doubt as part of that, there'll be some coordination with respect to the sidewalk plan. So you know, we're typically, yes, we'd, uh, even if we're just a small segment of the sidewalk, we'd require it to be put in. But I think it, there's a much larger discussion that'll take place around sidewalks so when we talk about that entire corridor. But I, getting back to Don's question, will North Shore retain that sidewalk, improve it? They're certainly not gonna get rid of it. Why would we get rid of it, even though it goes nowhere? No, we would, I wouldn't suggest that we'd get rid of it. It's, it's a matter of just connecting it with the remainder of the sidewalk network on the north side of the street. Mayor? Yes. Commissioner Sullivan, um, just kind of filling in on what Doug um, had spoken about. We did receive an actually are in the progress or process of, of proving um, a municipal and state agreement with a surface transportation project that we were awarded um, to rehab Drexel Avenue, which does include some areas of improvements. We are looking at adding sidewalk Potentially, we're in conversations with the Department of Transportation at this time um, to find out what limits we can and cannot do. But we have been awarded a substantial amount of money funding wise to improve basically the ride and some of the failing pavements. And probably we're looking at improving or potentially improving and adding sidewalk in, in certain areas where there's gaps. Okay. So I guess the sidewalk will remain in front of this property at 200 West Drexel. You, you are correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, Don, anything else? No, that's it. Okay, um, Chris? Uh, no, all my questions been answered, thank you. Uh, Greg? No questions at this time, thanks. Uh, Don? No questions. 
Uh, Matt, anything uh, beyond the sidewalk talk you gave us? Um, I'd just like to fill in too with uh, Commissioner Seepert's comment on the flood, floodway and flood fringe and carries. Um, they are impacting the flood fringe and they're required to replace that at a, a one to 1.1 to one, which their plan at this time does, um, does replace that flood fringe um, kind of on the west side of their property. And actually it improves it beyond um, our requirements. So outside of that, they're continuing to work with us and uh, we're working with our engineering department to make sure they um, follow a flood, flood ways, flood fringes, green infrastructure. So we're good so far. Thank you, Matt. Christine? Uh, no questions, thank you. Okay. Um, the only ones I had was about the sidewalks, which, which we kind of took care of. Uh, the other thing that caught my eye uh, from a fire perspective, this is an unsprinkled building. I know it's only like 2,500 square foot, but I thought all commercial institutions had to be sprinkled. Am I mistaken with that? Uh, yeah, if it's over 10,000 square feet um, and it's a new construction, it would be sprinkled. But if it's under 10,000 feet, it is not required. Oh, it's under 10,000. Okay. Thank you. Um, I do like to see them sprinkled. I'm kind of a fan of sprinklers, but uh, I guess that's their choice. So um, other than that, no, I think it's a vast improvement to the area. It's, I think it's a nice looking building. Uh, and on a very challenged property, they managed to meet the setbacks and everything else so far. So glad to see that. So there's no further questions. Uh, motion. Did I make a comment? Oh, please. This is Eric Newman with MSI General. I just wanted to acknowledge Carrie and the, the staff that they've been awesome to work with on this project. I appreciate that uh, very much. It's been, a, it's been a treat to do that so far. Um, I do want to make a point that when we do revise the landscaping plan that we have to be very sensitive to the guidelines that banks follow when it comes to the heights of plants, especially at mature levels from a safety, security, theft standpoint. So um, we'll probably schedule a meeting with staff to do that because they, they don't want things really tall because of people hiding bushes and other stuff like that as a, just as a general comment. Okay. And at, oh. Eric, this is Carrie. That's that's perfectly understandable. We will definitely have a conversation. It's not anything that's entirely concerning at this point. We just noted that the landscape plan itself was missing the heights. Got it. Thank you. Eric, thank you for your comments. Sometimes we take it for granted because we roll through our meetings. We do a lot of development and our staff is really good. Um, I, I mean, they get it right most of the time and, and they're right on target. And they're responsible for a lot of good things that go on here. And it's nice when an end user like yourself comes in and acknowledges that. They hear it from us, but it's really nice when you work all over the, the communities. So it's, it's really good to hear it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, motion. Seifert moves that the Planning Commission approves the site and building plan submitted by Dave Kane, North Shore Bank, for the property at 200 West Drexel Avenue with the following conditions. One, that all relevant code requirements are in effect. Two, that all mechanical equipment, transformers and utility box, ground boxes and rooftops are screened from view. Three, that all required floodplain and green infrastructure approves, approvals are provided to the engineering department prior to submission of building permit applications. Four, that all revised plans, site, building, landscaping, and so forth are submitted in digital format for review and approval by the Plan Commission or Department of Community Development prior to the submission of building permit applications. Before we have a second, that's another either or that I'd like the plan commission to rule on. It's either the plan commission would be responsible for reviewing revised plans or the Department of Community Development. In this case, I would actually be fine if it was deferred to our department for the minor requirements that are still required. Commissioners, um, I'm in favor of letting staff handle it, but I will uh, seek your opinion. Uh, same here, I agree with that. Thank you, Christine. 
Uh, does anybody differ in the opinion? No, no, I agree with it. Thank you, Fred. Okay, I, I think support that, that. Appreciate it. Okay, Carrie Staff will handle the odds and ends. So noted. Then Guzikowski seconds. Roll call. Anna, aye. Sullivan, aye. Rillo, aye. Lorik, aye. Kavich, aye. Guzikowski, aye. Lani, aye. Seaford, aye. Chandler, aye. Okay. All right. Uh, good luck. Um, any timeline on when you think you'll start, Eric? Andrea? Uh, we're we're uh, shooting for next spring, for okay. sure. Well, great. Look forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next up, we have uh, a review of a rezone on portions of the property at 3280 East Oakwood Road from A1 Limited Agriculture to R3 Single Family Residential. Carrie? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Currently, this property is zoned A1 and the uh, adjacent properties are zoned RS3. And this is part of a larger application request, actually. This is going to affect a proposed CSM to be reviewed in the next agenda item. Um, they are both interdependent of each other, meaning we cannot have a rezone without the CSM, and the CSM would likely not move forward without the rezone. Um, the reason that they are interdependent partially is because of the A1 district requirements and they would not be met with the proposed uh, CSM changes or the rezone. So uh, we currently do not have any development that is proposed as a part of this request. Um, there are also no changes to the floodway, the flood fringe, or the C1 shoreline wetland districts for this particular request. On the screen right now are the three exhibits showing where the rezone would occur. It's a little bit taken out of context here and I apologize for that, but it'll become more clear once we talk about the CSM. Lot two is what is going to be proposed. It will be around the existing homestead with the uh, existing buildings along Oakwood Road. Um, that is approximately two acres. That would be rezoned to RS3 from A1. Lot three is a lot line adjustment for an existing property. Um, that existing property is going to be increased to uh, by 0.2411 acres to an overall of 0 0.73 acres. Um, this is an existing developed residence and this is simply adding a little bit more and squaring off that parcel uh, with some of the overall um, property at 3280. Uh, just bringing it to a little bit larger, uh, extending it to the west. Lot four is a similar situation. This is a lot line adjustment providing 0 .20, 0 0.02503, if I can read that correctly, acres to the existing lot, and that would bring it to an overall size of 0 0.68 acres. Um, again, this is an existing single family residence squaring it off with some property to the west. These properties uh, for lot three and four are currently zoned RS3 and the rezone pertains specifically to that lot line adjustment area. There's no development again proposed for lot one, that's the remaining 27.89 acres that we will discuss in the CSM agenda item uh, next if this is recommended for approval. So with that, there is a suggested motion for approval on the screen for plan commission consideration. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Carrie. Um, Kevin, do we have the applicant with us? Would they like to say anything or do they just wanna wait for questions from the commission? I believe we have uh, Dale DeWitt. Dale, you're able to speak. Dale, if you'd like to say something, the floor is yours. If not, you can wait on questions. I'm sorry, I was talking and nobody was hearing. <laughs> yeah, that happens with this stuff. 
Yeah, I was, I was, I was saying, uh, my, name is Dale, my name is Dale DeWitt. I live on 3380 East Oakwood Road, Oak Lane in Oak Creek. And I'm at this meeting to represent my, my 94 year old mother-in-law, who is the owner of the property, 3280 East Oakwood Road. I have no comments at this time, but I will uh, when we talk about the CSM. Okay. Um, we'll start with the commissioners. Uh, Christine, can you start us off, please? Um, Mr. Mayor, oh. if I can interrupt just before we get yeah. to the commission, sure. I do I do want to say and acknowledge that we did receive some comments and questions from a neighbor who appears to be on the call tonight. Okay. Uh, one was yeah. one question that I'd like to make sure is in the record that was asked, why did the Common Council hold this item in 2018? They actually did not hold the, this particular item. It was a separate request that was uh, held in order to answer some questions and was ultimately approved. Um, that was a CSM rezone variation request. Um, it was a combination for the creation of one additional parcel. Are there potential houses and what would their minimum size be? Right now, um, there are no pr proposed homes as they're all currently developed. Uh, I did get an inquiry from the person who is considering purchasing the proposed lot two as to what size of home would be allowed on the property should they change that home. Um, it would meet with the minimum size requirements as per the RS3 district. There are minimum size requirements depending on how many stories the house is. Um, and there was a comment that the parcel does flood uh, often and we will be discussing the floodplains um, and the drainage ways for the CSM in the next agenda item. But I just wanted to um, enter in those questions and comments into the record since they were received by email. Thank you for that, Carrie. I appreciate it. Um, Christine, would you like to start? Uh, yes, actually, Carrie just answered some of the question. I had similar for the uh, floodplain and what the impact of flooding on that property or adjacent property. So I'm just going to wait till the end and see how it goes. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Matt? We have no issues with the rezoning. It'll be the next item. Okay. Uh, Dawn? No question. Uh, Greg? No questions, thank you. Chris? None for me either. Thank you. Uh, no, no questions. Fred? No questions. Okay, Chaucey? I do have a question for the applicant. Uh, Dale, can you provide a little more information on why this request uh, has come to the commissioners for rezoning? Yes, uh, oh, you can hear me. Um, yes, the, the two acres are being parceled off so we can sell that parcel to actually the renters that are, have been renting it for 11 years. Um, it doesn't show, but there is a, a building on, there's three buildings actually. There's a house, a garage, and a barn. Um, these are historical buildings. They've been there for many, many years. Um, the other request to expand lots um, it's partially due to uh, both property owners would like to ensure that we've got access to our backyards in case we need to to uh, get back there and maintain trees and that type of thing. I, I will say that uh, on the expansions, uh, we're family members of the of the uh, property owner. I'm, I'm a son-in-law and the uh, lot three is a son of the property owner. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, on this, I, I really don't have any questions uh, whatsoever. So I'm, I'm ready to move on to uh, the motion and then the, the CSM afterwards, so. Who is it, Kowski? Kuzikowski makes a motion that the plan commission recommends to the common council. I apologize for interrupting. I just wanted to see, um, Kevin, is there anybody who wanted to speak on this particular item since we did get questions that were emailed? Uh, we do have a phone in that would like to speak with us. Oh, hand. thank you, Carrie. I, I thought we didn't have anybody beyond Dale. Uh, four Hi. and four. Yep, you're good to go. Hi, name and Hi, address, Mike. please. 
My name is Monica Perkins, 3408 East O'Brien Road. Um, I live at like the end of the cul-de-sac and the field is there. Um, it was noted that the buildings are historic. Are those buildings going to be left there and are they on the historic registry? And also when you take that two acre parcel out, is it going to be able to be subdivided into four single family homes with half acre lots? Um, my concern is filling the field or raising it up and then the water has no place to go, but in our basements and homes. Okay, Monica, we'll see if we can answer them. Um, as far as the buildings go, I can't answer the historical end of it, nor can anybody, can anybody, Dale, anybody yeah. from the city? Yeah, yes, uh, they're, not on a, they're not on a historical register, they're just very old buildings. Okay, um, then secondly, I guess that's a staff question. Would lot two ever have the possibility of being divided into three half acre, or I'm sorry, four half acre lots to accommodate four new homes? Lot two we're speaking of. Proposed lot two, if it met all of the requirements for the district, would potentially be able to be divided further. Now. There's a, a lot that goes along with that. There are wetlands that affect the property, floodplain that affects the property. Um, the positioning of the existing buildings affects that ability to further divide and, and redevelop. Um, that's not to say that the buildings couldn't be either moved or removed, um, but there are considerations other than just the size of the property for redevelopment purposes. Should there ever be any redevelopment of the property other than what would typically go through a building permit process and not need plan commission approval, uh, there would be notice to landowners within 300 feet for any such a pro uh, pr uh, proposal. Does that help, Monica, uh, explanation wise? Um, it just seems like we went through this, like they said, in. 2018 giving them that one parcel and now they keep coming back for more and more which is they're right they own the property however it reflects a lot on the people that live close to it like I said the kids next door took canoes out there in the field I'm not kidding if you guys have ever driving around after a storm it floods at least four and five times a year so where's the water going to go well, as of right now, there's no proposed development, but again, that, that whole, to, you, to your point, Monica, with that water, that, that water would all have to be managed before any development could be approved. And staff, you can correct me if I'm wrong in my assumption of that. Stormwater management plans would have to be in place and because development of that can infringe on your property. Am I, did I say that correctly? Uh, I'll, I'll speak for that, Mayor. Um, as far as stormwater management, it would probably fall under the green infrastructure requirements, which is, you know, for smaller, uh, smaller development, like three or four lots. So as far as stormwater management pond, it probably wouldn't meet those requirements or needs under MMSD or our ordinance, but it would fall under some green infrastructure where they would have to, each parcel would have to manage their water in, in a smaller fashion, whether that be you know, rain barrels or, um, you know, those type of infrastructures that, that are approved. So that would have to go through engineering though and be approved through the council. Yeah, it sounds like they'd need more than rain barrels if the kids are out there in canoes and it's a field now. But again, um, sounds like a difficult property, not impossible, but a difficult property then to develop. Is that a fair statement? Yes. Okay. From, from my perspective, I, I think if you have, especially at, at the start, you have at least two uh, property owners that are family members, you know, so you're, you're going to have um, two properties that are, you know, next to one another. 
uh, as as he stated earlier. Um, I think that's a, a good start. And, and if it's a challenging property and they're willing to put the effort into it, uh, you know, who knows what's going to happen on the other ones. But for the time being, this is, you know, for the uh, for the uh, rezone right now. And maybe if I might, Mr. Mayor, I mean, just to refresh the commission's memory that it's the intent, but not the obligation uh, to work with the MMSD on preserving the bulk of this property precisely for that reason, for stormwater management, because of the issues with respect to flooding. So I think that what the DeWitts uh, are doing are preparing this property for, for possible trans sale or transfer of MMSD. Although, I mean, again, that's, it's not a done deal. It's just something that's being explored right now. Okay. Well, uh, so that's, that's interesting. Monica, did, did you, um, did you understand that, that whole statement there? I do. Okay. Thank. I, uh, sometimes we talk in terms. MMSD is the Metropolitan Sewer District. I know what it is. Thank oh, you. Okay. Sorry. I don't mean to talk down to anybody, but sometimes we. No. Talk no. 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 You're not. You're not. All right. Okay. Um, if there's no further questions, then I guess uh, we can move on to rezone, and we'll go on to the CSM. All right. Kuzikowski moves that the plan commission recommends to the common council that portions of the property at 3280 East Oakwood Road be rezoned to from A1 limited agriculture to RS3 single family residential. No changes to the FW floodway, FF flood fringe or C1 shoreland wetland conservancy districts in conjunction with a certified survey map dividing the property after a public hearing. Paper seconds. Roll call. And I. Krillo, I. Laura, I. Kavich, I. Kuzikowski, I. Kulvani, I. Sapert, I. Chandler, I. Okay. All right, that gets us to um, the certified survey map concerning the same three properties, 3280, well, 33, I'm sorry, there are three separate properties. It's a map dividing and reconfiguring the properties of 3280, 3360th East Oakwood, and 3380 East Oak Lane. And this is a certified survey map amendment. Uh, Carrie? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. As we were discussing with the previous item, this is affecting those three properties and the current zoning for all three is A1 and RS3. So the proposal is to divide approximately two acres around the existing buildings as we previously discussed, add about 2.0.2411 acres to the existing parcel at 3360 East Oakwood and just a little bit more to the existing parcel at 3380 East Oak Lane. So again, these two requests are interdependent on each other due to the fact that uh, they cannot be rezoned without, uh, or they, they can't be divided without that rezone. Okay. This is the proposed certified survey map and it shows the lots. Um, we're gonna go through this a little bit more in detail because there is quite a bit going on here. So lot two is, uh, showing the house, the garage, and the barn, two acres along Oakwood Road. Lot three is showing that squared off parcel that incorporates the extra to the west uh, that was part of that exhibit for the rezone. That includes the existing single family home and outbuildings. There is also shown on this portion of the CSM uh, a cul-de-sac off of East O'Brien, and that's formalizing the, um, the cul-de-sac that's temporary there. Uh, same thing for East Oak Lane. There's a cul-de-sac that's being uh, added there for public right-of-way for the what's now a temporary cul-de-sac. And then lot four, which has the existing home, uh, again, incorporating that lot line division for the addition of the uh, 0.25 acres. The remaining lot area of lot one is 27 acres. And as Doug had previously mentioned, um, the current idea is for that lot one to be put into conservancy, whether it's with the Nature Conservancy 
or MMSD or some combination of that. Um, so there are some required corrections that we're also going to be getting into as we move forward with the certified survey map review. So this is just giving you an idea, a little bit of an uh, up close look at what lot two would look like. Um, and you can see from the positioning of the existing buildings that dividing that property further would be quite difficult, if not, um, not in compliance with what current code would require. It's not showing the extent of the wetlands that is shown on subsequent pages. Again, we'll be talking about the conditions for this certified survey map for approval. Um, there's nothing saying that these particular buildings couldn't be relocated or removed and redeveloped, but at this point, um, this is the current configuration of that proposed lot two. This is showing the close up of that lot three area plus the cul de sac for East O'Brien Road. And then lot four, again with the cul de sac for East Oak Lane. On subsequent pages of the CSM, we do have some easements that we're talking about, and these are drainage easements. Uh, and then we are also showing here uh, an extension of the sanitary sewer easement, which was required by the utility. On this page, we're showing the extensive wetlands and floodplains that are on the property. And you can see that both of those wetland and floodplain lines do cross over into lot two. So that is another consideration for any kind of future development of lot two and indeed for lot one. So there are some required corrections and these are things that we have been discussing and staff in multiple departments have been discussing with the uh, applicant and their surveyor. Um, the code requirements that are, re that are gonna be in effect all apply. Floodplain areas need to be included on the CSM and that actual, uh, that condition of approval was incorporated into this revised CSM and that was incorporated after the staff report was written. We still do need to have a note stating that the wetland and floodplain delineations appear on subsequent pages of the CSM. That needs to appear on sheet one um, prior to recording. Public rights of way around the cul-de-sacs at the west ends of East Local Oak Lane and East O'Brien Road shall be dedicated to the city as part of the CSM and the Common Council signature block on the last page shall be updated to include that dedication and acceptance. That is a condition that will be generating some discussion here tonight. The existing 60 foot sanitary and water main easement shall be included on the CSM prior to recording. There is a sanitary easement that has been uh, shown on the CSM and the utility will be made aware of the rev revision so that they can incorporate that into their plans. 25 foot drainage easement centered on the swale between Oak Lane and Oakwood Road shall be included on the CSM prior to recording. This is another discussion point that'll be, um, that'll generate a lot of uh, talking between the applicant and the plan commission. Um, it has garnered quite a bit of discussion amongst staff members as well. And then seven, all technical corrections, including but not limited to spelling errors, minor coordinate geometry corrections, and corrections required for compliance with the municipal code and Wisconsin's, Wisconsin statutes are made prior to recording. There was one minor typo that was noted, um, and I have not yet had an opportunity to determine whether that uh, was incorporated into the revisions that were received of late. Rather than having um, a discussion that I would potentially get misconstrued, I would like to turn it over to the applicant uh, because they do have questions about some of these requirements and that will garner the discussion. Uh, the plan commission did receive an email that listed those concerns and questions and along with the engineering department's responses. Uh, that discussion is now for the Planning Commission to consider. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Carrie. Um, again, if you've had a chance, uh, there were questions surrounding basically uh, a lot of questions about the easements and uh, requirements by the city. Uh, Dale, we'll, we'll give you the floor and, and uh, see if your answers have been satisfied by email or if you have further questions. Am I unmuted now? Okay. Yes. Uh, yes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, 
Yes, I, first of all, I'd like to thank Carrie for uh, guiding us through this process up to this point. Uh, she is very helpful and uh, um, I appreciate her uh, handling all the comments and questions that I've had so far. Um, and also I'd like to uh, thank Mr. Sullivan for responding to the uh, list of questions we had regarding the dedication of the, of the uh, cul-de-sacs and the uh, proposal of the easement uh, between Oak Lane and Oakwood Road. Uh, that cleared up a lot of things, so I want to thank you for that. Um, I believe the only remaining issue that the owner has at this time is in regards to the proposed new drainage easement. Um, I'd like to level set, I guess, what, what a drainage easement is in case there's people on the call that, that don't know, at least my understanding of what it is. It's put in place to, to limit the property owner from negatively affecting the existing historical drainage. Uh, however, the drainage easement also gives the city the right to alter land to maintain or improve drainage if they so choose. Uh, depending on the extent of that drainage alteration, it may impact our ability to access the land to the east of the proposed easement to plant and harvest crops. Uh, I know the current intent of the city is to maintain the historical drainage the way it is, but our concern is what will the future bring and how will future administrators deal with this drainage? Uh, the property is currently under a perpetual lease for 25 acres of farmland to a farmer in Caledonia. If the city impacts its ability to farm the entire parcel, the owner could very well lose the lease and the future ability to lease the land. Money generated from this land lease is used by the owner to pay the taxes on the property. I believe there's no need for a new drainage easement at this time. However, if the city insists on one, we su suggest to be a drainage easement with a restriction stating that the city shall maintain the historical drainage as is. This will ensure that the existing historical drainage be maintained without alteration and guarantee access for farming both now and into the future. It's my understanding that many easements have been created with restrictions, so this would not be an unusual thing. It may be unusual in Oak Creek, I don't know, but um, I think it's common elsewhere. So with that, I would turn it over to you, uh, Mr. Mayor, and continue on with discussion. Okay. Um, thank you, Dale, and, and I'm glad staff was able to clear up a lot of the concerns about the other stuff. Um, this easement's historically been in place and being managed the way it is, there's really no intent to go out there and, and change it whatsoever. Um, I would really defer to my staff and, and particularly our, our engineer that, that sits on, on the commission right now, Matt Sullivan, uh, to really give you the technical terms of, of what that easement does and from a city's perspective, what's expected of it and uh, why we don't put the restrictions in place to an unforeseen date in the future. Go ahead, Matt. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, Mr. DeWitt, I, I, I agree with your terminology as, and definitions of, of what a drainage easement is. I appreciate you providing that for the commission members. Um, like, uh, like we stated, our, our intent is not to uh, prohibit the ability for, for you to farm under your agreement. Um, I think it's more for if if there, you know, if if things start to happen where you know that drainage area might get filled in, we have that ability to come in and just clear it out. Um, it, from what I understand, there's some areas out there that have some under drain that connect, you know, to some of the homes. Um, I, I can't really remember the particulars, but I think it's more for just making sure that there's the ability for the city to maintain that flow of water. It's not to, uh, in, the, in the future, to prohibit the ability to, to, to farm it. Um, our intent is not to, um, you know, reduce the amount of farming that you already currently have. Um, that, that certainly is not our intent. Um, so, I mean, we, we would be willing to entertain um, language uh, like, like you suggested. Um, and we could work between yourself, your surveyor, 
um, our stormwater management group and and come to some kind of um, a work here to make sure that both our interests and your interests are protected and and uh, the other residents in the area. Um, I, I think we could come to some some kind of agreement and terminology as long as we feel that you know once it's sold or, or things along those lines we just don't want to lose that ability to um, continue to have that drainage and, and clearing those areas out is that is that I mean is, is that clear yes and and I totally understand and concur that you know that drainage needs to be maintained yeah um, I mean, we live within this this boundary, and we understand the water conditions. Yeah. Um, I just I just hope you understand that our concern is that there's a significant portion of land there that we could lose if the city decided to come in and put a let's say a deeper ditch in there or something like that in the future. Now, yeah. I know, I, I know you know the intent now is not to that there's no plan for that, but. As I said before, you know, we don't know what the future is going to bring. We don't know what new administration will bring to that, to the table on that. You know, I, I, I'm sure there could be some wording in there that, you know, we would maintain the, you know, the elevations and, and you know, the shape and form. And I, I'm sure we could come up with some kind of language between, you know, that's been maybe used in, in other uh, neighboring cities or, or municipalities and, and other government agencies between homeowners and you know, property owners in the, in the cities to come up with something to where, you know, we're, you know, uh, future administrations don't go in there and do that. Um, so, um, you know, obviously 15 years we that I've been here, we haven't gone out and just dug ditches deeper, um, especially in that area. I don't think it's really going to help. Um, it's pretty flooded most of the time, but this is just to just provide that that flow. So. Um, I think I think I think we're kind of on the same pattern as far as what we're thinking, and, and I think we can work through this um, and, and come to that understanding agreement between between the two parties. Yeah, that, that sounds great. Let's let's get it done. Uh, you know, I concur. You know, putting a, a deeper ditch there or something like that probably wouldn't help because you're right. Unless something's done downstream, the water wouldn't go anywhere anyway. Yep. Okay. So let me ask you this. Um, I guess this is a question from Matt and or Carrie. Um, in the conditions, how do we cite that we're going to continue in the negotiation of language concerning um, not so much the, the, the easement coming to the city, but the condition the easement stays in? How should we state that in the, in the conditions? Carrie? Anybody want to wordsmith that? <laughs> now I'll confer to carry on, on the language, but I, I think it's just it, it's it's almost as simple as you know. It, maybe we just have in there, you know, that, the that there with, with uh, language that's you know um, agreed upon between staff and and property owner or something along those lines. Carrie, is there some kind of language that you can think of that would be clear? You know, I'm not even sure that we need to change this particular suggested motion, that condition saying that the easement shall be centered on the swale unless the centered on the swale is concerning. There's nothing in here saying that they shouldn't work with engineering in order to come up with agreeable language for that particular easement. Um, I think that's, that's pretty much, um, that's expected since this is going to be a written easement that will have to be uh, recorded. So I, I don't see necessarily, again, unless we have to change the swale language, that this particular condition has to be amended unless the plan commission really wants something that I can come up with on the fly. No, if it's going to be recorded is, legally on the document, I, I guess that would be enough, right? Because mm -hmm. it's got to be recorded and yep. signed off by everybody. It, yeah, and, and this is also under our minutes that we've discussed it. I, I think it should be, you know, recorded under our minutes. Um, so that can be, you know, part of that documentation or, or something we can fall back on. And, and so can Mr. DeWitt as far as the discussion. Mr. Mayor, uh, number seven, you know, all technical corrections. I mean, we're still working through that. So that really alludes to 
all of that stuff as well, I feel. But I yeah. could be off. No. I mean, the, the only thing that I could think to include in here is a 25 foot drainage easement centered on the swale uh, shall be uh, included on the CSM prior to recording and written document. Um, written document recorded for it as well. I mean, the the written portion would have to be coordinated with the engineering department. It could be written, the written document with conditions. Right. Include a written document with conditions? Well, yeah, let, so. let me try and wordsmith this a little bit. Okay. Sorry to put you on the spot, but. Oh, while well, she's doing that, Mr. Mayor, maybe if you just, for the sole purpose of getting something in the Planning Commission minutes, uh, putting the intent there that it, that it shall provide access for continued agricultural use that might uh, assuage some of the concerns of the property owners. Yeah, it might be that simple, Doug. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I, you know, that, that language like that and, and maintaining the, you know, historical elevation through the swale. So, we can satisfy Mr. DeWitt on the not going deeper and in and, and those that type of language. Uh, we're I, out of engineering. I, I think we'd be we'd be more than satisfied with that. It just it, it gives us that tool and that ability to to you know keep keep things moving down there and, and safely and and that's for everyone. I do have a question. Uh, go ahead. So with this uh, drainage easement, does that address uh, the flooding issue that came up with the resident? No, I think the water will still gather there, Commissioner Chandler. Um, this helps, but it's still not doing it. It's just such a, I mean, by the map, it's just a lot of flood, floodway area, wetland area. Um, that, that side of town's pretty wet down there to begin with. Um, and this land's really helping hold a lot of that. So, I mean, if, if MMSD does take control of it, um, it would forever stay there, which, which is good for the, the people in the area. But again, it's important we have that pipe to carry that water out. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I'm going to ask for to I'm going to ask for Commissioner Sullivan to help me out to make sure that I'm not misstating this. Um, I have a condition that would state a 25 foot drainage easement centered on the swale between Oak Lane and Oakwood Road, maintaining access for agricultural purposes and drainage elevations, shall be included on the CSM prior to recording, with a written easement coordinated with the engineering department recorded prior to recording. That's not working. Let me, let me try that again. <laughs> mm -hmm. Close, close, Gary. Hello. We're getting hacked. Okay, let me, let me try this one. A 25 foot drainage easement centered on the swale between Oak Lane and Oakwood Road, maintaining access for agricultural purposes and drainage elevations shall be included on the CSM prior to recording. A written easement coordinated with the engineering department shall be recorded prior to or concurrent with the CSM. 
Yeah, I'm good. I'm good with that. That sounds that sounds favorable to both parties, at, at least for us. Yeah, Mr. Dewitt. Yes. That, yes, Carrie, you're good. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, then, if there's any further questions from the commissioners before we attempt the motion here. Okay, nope. seeing, seeing none, which brave soul is going to make the motion? I'll go for it. <laughs> Guzik calls, uh, Carrie, could you flip back to page one? Uh, All righty, Guzikowski makes a motion that the plan commission recommends to the common council that the cer cer certified survey map submitted by Laverne Boers LL for properties at 3280 and 3360 East Oakwood Road and 3380 East Oak Lane be approved with the following conditions. One, that all relevant code requirements are in effect. Two, that all floodplain areas shall be included on the CSM prior to recording. Three, that a note stating that the wetland and floodplain delineations appear on subsequent pages of the CSM shall be included on sheet one of the CSM prior to recording. Four, that the public rights of way around the cul-de-sacs and West End ends of o East Oak Lane and East O'Brien Road shall be dedicated to the city as a part of CSM, the CSM. The Common Council signature block on the last page shall be updated to include the dedication and acceptance of the rights of way. Five, that the existing 60 foot sanitary water main easement shall be included on the CSM prior to recording. Condition six. Six. A 25 foot drainage easement centered on the swale between Oak Lane and Oakwood Road, maintaining access for agricultural purposes and drainage elevations shall be included on the CSM prior to recording. A written easement coordinated with the engineering department shall be recorded prior to or concurrent with the CSM. As noted, seven, that all technical collect, uh, corrections, including but not limited, uh, limited to spelling errors, minor coordinate geometry corrections, and corrections required for compliance with the municipal code and Wisconsin statutes are made prior to recording. Pippert seconds. Roll call. Hannah, I. Sullivan, I. Rillo, I. Laura, I. Kavich, I. Guzikowski, I. Aldani, I. Super, I. Chandler, I. Okay. Okay, Mr. DeWitt, uh, thank you for your patience uh, waiting on this meeting. You, you were the last item, unfortunately. Uh, but the end result was uh, positive on both ends, so appreciate that. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, good luck. Um, again, continue to work and communicate with staff and everything will work out great. Thank you. Uh, before we adjourn, just a note, um, if you've been watching the, the updates from our health department, unfortunately, Oak Creek experienced another spike. Uh, we had another 50 plus cases positive in Oak Creek. So please abide by the CDC rules, be respectful of all, wear the mask when possible. Um, try to do the right things, help help not only your neighbors and your friends out, but help the businesses out. We don't want to relapse into what we experienced in spring. Uh, but on a more positive note, uh, we do have a farmer's market. Uh, it is our one event that's going on. Dawn, what's new at the farmer's market this week? Well, we're all uh, trying to keep as safe as possible and uh, all the farmers and all the vendors are um, completely spread out all over the square. So that's a safety, um, as well as everyone's wearing masks um, as far as the vendors. Um, but we have new, um, you know, thing, new things are being harvested. So uh, last week we even had tomatoes. So um, corn, will be, corn is right around the corner. 
Um, but otherwise, uh, the farmers have, we have nine farmers this year and lots of fruits and vegetables available. It's a nice way to spend a Saturday morning. If you haven't paid it a visit, uh, make an effort. I think you'll enjoy it. So with that, I'd like to thank staff. Our IT guy, Kevin, does a great job. Uh, more importantly, engineering planning really got to work out this week. These were difficult items. They make it look easy. Um, I'm glad uh, somebody commented on the work you guys do behind the scenes because we come here and everything's prepared for us. Uh, there's a lot that goes into the sausage making and they really get it done for us. So not the prettiest way to say that, but thank you. So Doug, thanks for taking the time tonight, being on the call, always appreciate that. And Mike, again, thanks. Thanks with fire. Um, again, appreciate the input you guys put in and it, I know it takes the time, but it's important for the city that you guys are here. So with that, adjournment. Perlo moves to adjourn at 8.05. Anna Seconds. Roll call. Anna I. Sullivan I. Perlo I. Laura I. David I. Kuzikowski I. Aldani I. Seaford I. Chandler I. Okay, commissioners. Thank you. Enjoy your weekend. Um, it's going to be nice out. A little bit of rain, but, but from here on out, it's summer. It's short, so enjoy it. See you in two weeks. <laughs>